Welcome inside Total Access Endgame on another fun-filled Monday night. And if you don't like high-scoring affairs, then shame <laughs> on you. This matchup is not for you. Also, not for the faint of heart. Two 9-1 teams going head-to-head, -head, tooth and nail at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum in Kansas City. Just going ahead. It's now 44 to 40, and something tells me there will be more lead changes to come with 11 and change to go. With that being said, welcome as always into another edition of Total Access Endgame. The whole gang is here once again. James Jones, Reggie Wayne, Colts Ring of Honor recipient. There you we'll go. Talk about that a dog, little bit later. Like 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 bro. Bro. Tip of the cap. OG. Oh, Reggie wow, Wayne over bro. there. And Good Mike team, Robinson hey. back from that East Coast stroll. Of Let, course, man. You know how we do it, bro. Come right. Welcome back, back now, baby. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, guys. Ain't in no welcome Ring of so Honor. You know that. We know you're not. We know you're not. We will talk about that just a little bit later. We're going to work on getting you in that Ring of Honor. Don't do me like that. Back to the East, NFC East. And we're going to talk about how things are going down there. We're going to take a look at those Washington Redskins. Is Mike, you know, I only play because I love you, man. That's why. All, all right, all right. All Texans and Redskins. Alex Smith, seven giveaways. He's been efficient so far this year. Seven quarter, looking for Jordan Reed. But it's, Want to fish it right there? Wrong yeah. read. <laughs> wrong read and the wrong read. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, that's uh, Justin Reed. He's a smart kid. He went to Stanford, 101 yards to the house. Oh, Texas. everybody went to Stanford smart? Yeah, I don't know any fools that oh, went there. 17 to 7. Good, no. good today, Redskins yeah, down 17-7 uh, still, and this uh, is not what you want to see. No, Kirk Cousins, see that, get well soon. Joe Theismann taking to Twitter. That was Twitter. Alex, man. That was yeah. Alex. Man. Alex's on, legs man. exactly like mine 33 you years to. ago to the day, <laughs> Joe. It, I didn't even know that Joe was that active on Twitter. Next Redskins possession, Colt McCoy, the pride of Tuscola Jim oh, Ned into this yeah. one. There you go. Count it. That's the right read. Jordan. Yeah. Reed. Oh, matter. He still got a little burst. See, see the that jump, jump cut? You see the jump cut. <laughs> yeah. 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 He got a little burst. He said, I got somewhere to go. He yeah. was going. His, his handshake will break your glove and his running style will break your heart. Adrian Peterson. Passes John Riggins, sixth all-time in rushing touchdown. First lead change of the season for Washington. But 33 seconds to go. Colt McCoy to Trey Quinn for the Texans, 45. McCoy finished 50-50, 6 of 12, 54 yards and a touchdown. But four plays later, Deshaun Watson looking on. Dustin Hopkins, can he kick it? Yes, he can. No, no, he, no can. he can. Oh. Right. Yeah. Was, yeah. I thought it was part of it the was song. All right. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, that's he right. Was Redskins, they fall in this one. 23 to 21 Texans. They win their seventh in a row. In the meantime, Cowboys and Falcons. Fourth quarter, Dak Prescott. Okay, Dak. Ooh, the little keeper. Not too shabby. Man, Cowboys. Like more moon out there, man. Yeah. Uh, With a three point cushion after they the oh, no. extra point, then. I'm just Matt saying looks, man. Oh, 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 look what I found. And oh. that's in. Leighton Vanda Esch. That's back-to-back -back games with a pick for him. He yeah, heard he it from Sean Lee. You got to catch the ball, young fellow. You got to catch the ball. Yeah, winning the battle of first-round draft picks, beating Calvin Ridley on that pick. Then two plays later, feed the beast. Feed him. Mm. Use that giant fork that MJD Ooh. says Ooh. that you got to give him that Ooh. meal with. Yards after Ooh. contact. Man, tell the team starting to run the ball, wide Ooh, receivers. I'm just saying, that's what's happening across the league. Two under run scrimmage yards, and after the field goal, Matt Ryan to Julio. And they also and they throw, throw it. <laughs> you right, I learned. You absolutely right about that one. Yeah, Julio, Ooh, Julio. Yeah. six catches, 118 yards, had a touchdown. Two games uh, in a row with a touchdown. Like a that go that man. How about, how about that? You yeah. see that, You Jones? know, it's always hard to get that first one, and then they just start rolling in after mm -hmm. that first one. That's exactly what's happened. The floodgates are open, but how about Dak and Cole Beasley? First down, chains move, 19-yard chunk. Cowboys moving closer. Oh, like I in this separation, In the man. field goal range. Oh, yeah. Matt Ryan saying, oh, guys, I can't watch this. Uh, four plays later, three seconds to go. Brett yeah. Maher, from 42 yards away. <laughs> Mike, can he kick it? Uh, yes, he can. Okay. I had to wait yeah, to make he, sure he, he, he got it right on that one. <laughs> Cowboys, <laughs> they go on to get that win, 22 to 19. First win in the ATL Look at Jack. since he's two. Juiced. Stuff, he up. is a very happy and rightfully so because you take a look at the NFC East as it currently stands. The Redskins holding, slipping just a little bit at six and four, but the Dallas Cowboys looking to gain a full head of steam. The Eagles taking a little bit of a back seat this weekend, but don't look now. Still some games left and the Giants playing a much different brand of football than they yes, played they at the beginning of the season. So Reggie, when it comes yeah. to the NFC East, you see them from top to bottom. Who, who do you think is going to win it all once the dust settles? That's what I said when they, when they acquired Amari Cooper. 
mm -hmm. the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. He was okay. going to be the difference maker. He was going to get those other receivers open, and they was going to turn around and get a ball to <laughs> Zeke. That's true. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Dallas oh, Cowboys. Come on down. Da okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I want you to come on down because I want you to pick the rest of their schedule. Okay, you, ready, you, ready, you ready to make that move? I, let's do it. Oh, make that move. Are you ready to see the ring of honor now? So we can do a whole bunch of different stuff. Look at that. Talking and walking. Look at Dallas Cowboys. Look at that. The rest of that schedule. You see, they're five and five right now, but that's all right. Because they got the Washington Redskins without that Alex next Smith. Game lost. Cole McCoy could play ball. At, without <laughs> Alex Smith. I'm going to show you how many games it's going to take them to get into the playoffs. They're going to beat the Washington Redskins. Ooh. They're going to run into a juggernaut. Oh, yeah. I think we all can agree <laughs> that. That's an offensive chase right there. Right hell, man. You can stick a fork in Philadelphia. They, 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 a they, they, they fork game, in them? They are confused right now. No, they're in a Super Bowl A division game. That's what. And they're... And they're, ha they're having a Super Bowl hangover. They still, they still got a shot to win the division, Super too. Super Bowl hangover right there. Wow. You got to change it. You gave him a dub. Uh-oh. The uh -oh. Uh -oh. Indianapolis Colts. Uh -oh. you, you just got in that uh -oh. ring on. You better get him a Hold on. They oh, oh, no. Reggie, look. Reggie. Hey, Reg, I agree with you oh, on man. that. Control room's telling me we have Jim Lucey like, on line one. Right 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 now. Andrew Luck. <laughs> okay. Okay. Andrew Luck is in a lot of people's MVP run. He's, he, he's he has He has Ooh. been balling right. out. He has been balling out. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they finish. The Giants, they showing something. It's a division they game, though. Showing something. It's a division game. Game. But it's also it's week 17 where they didn't already pack up their lockers and all the U-Hauls <laughs> are outside. Reg, they would love to send the Cowboys home with them, Reg. Yeah. No, they, they're not going to do you, it. If they don't go, Nine we don't and go. Seven. We don't go, they don't Nine go. and seven's not going to get it done, Reg. We'll get these guys to win a division and no. get them in that, in that place. I, I, think no. you, I think nine and seven does win this division. No. Yeah. The Redskins are going to find a way to get to ten wins. You don't think You don't think Alex if Alex Smith's injury is going to be some type of a letdown. No, because I think you bit. get Colt McCoy in the game and the offense doesn't change and they still play winning football. And that's run it. Don't turn it over, Colt McCoy, and we play defense. And I think that's what they've been doing all year, even with Alex. They continue to do it and they find a way to get to 10 I wins just, and I, win this I, division. I hope Colt McCoy takes more chances downfield. Okay. That's all. I think Alex was having a good year. Yeah. Um, but you know he's not going to push the ball downfield. Mm -hmm. um, that, that that's much. how they was winning because they could run it too. And then you get Big Williams back on the offensive line. I think I think they're going to be all right. They find a way know. to get to ten wins. I don't know. <laughs> it, might be, it might be a little shell shock right there. <laughs> ah, you saw Joe Thiesman in that in that booth, yeah. dude. But he looks nervous too. Yeah. But it is weird. I mean, the yeah. exact same day, exact score, yeah, almost crazy. the same place on the yeah. field, man. Shout out to Alex. Yeah, pray for you, Alex, man. Get good energy your way, brother. So the Washington Redskins, what do you think? you think that they can get it done with Colt McCoy? Because, obviously, he, he's not Alex Smith, but Colt he's McCoy is the most longer. Longer. He's been in the system longer. Absolutely. He's been, he knows the just like Mike Rob said, downs. he's been in the system longer than Alex Smith. Yeah. He doesn't turn the ball over. Okay. He's a smart guy. You got AP in the backfield. We can run the football. And our defense is a very good defense. So, listen, nothing changes. And that's the good thing. Sometimes when, the ball I, but, yeah, sometimes <laughs> when, when you, you lose your starting quarterback, you have to change a lot. They don't okay. have to change anything. They still can play Redskins football. And I think they're going to find a way to get but, some but, more. What about but, the New York Giants? Do they have a realistic chance? Because if you say if it's getting to nine and seven, sitting there, they just got to win at, out at, at every single game. Absolutely. Because That's hard it's to the do. only <laughs> division right now where no team has more than six wins. Yeah. Reggie, I think uh, you had something you wanted to say. We're we, we really going to talk about the New York Giants? You got to talk yeah, about them. They because run the, two the, in the, a row. The, the division isn't sold up yet. They run two in a row. Why? Why? You're not, you're not like believing that, in Eli Manning and you're what they've done, at least the last two Saquon games. Saquon had almost 150 yards Reds, last you just, oh, said, you just said 9-9 and seven wins the division. What's if they the win out, they 9-7. and seven. The Giants are going to win out? <laughs> they can. Yeah. It's possible. Crazier you're things have happened. Exactly. Right. Reggie, don't be, don't be <laughs> like mathematically that, eliminated. Ain't nothing in there, Reggie. Ain't nothing in there, Reggie. The only division leader does not have six or more wins. Dennis wins my team. Fourth quarter. Starting to wind down, but still plenty of time left. The Los Angeles Rams oh, right now man. with that three-point cushion, 47 to 44. And this is a slugfest yeah, Rams just went at right the down Los the Angeles score, Coliseum. Man. And like I said just a few minutes ago, something tells me this will not be the last lead change. All Keep the fans that Let's go. <laughs> got those tickets last minute. This one's certainly worth the price of admission. 8.09 to go in the fourth and final. And this one inching its way closer to being one of the highest scoring games of all time. It already is one of them. We'll see if it can take the top spot by evening's end. But in the meantime, let's check in with the Titans and the Colts from Sunday. How, how, how about one of our own sidecar races? Hey, 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 
You should have dropped that thing, dude. His name is in the stadium forever. Wayne was awesome. Miles, the team, they were all rallying around my man, number 87. Is that the Indy special? Oh, Andrew Luck was trying to get his red shirt. Wait a minute, he tried to do it with me. He sold out for it. Yes, he did. I quite know, like 87 out there. But eventually the Colts would kick a field goal. Later in the second quarter, Andrew Luck to T.Y. Hilton, who was looking like 87. People was questioning if this guy was going to come back and be the same Andrew Luck. That's an example right there. Okay. I ain't gonna lie, I questioned it. He proving me wrong. This Cole team right here is totally different with Andrew Luck. 17 0 yeah, and up. Uh, and with yeah. a physical That coach uh, quarterback celebrates with his wide receivers. Oh. 24 seconds left in the second. Marcus Mariota sacked by Danico Autry. Oh, stinger action right there. His arm. A little, little. Mm. Shook oh. one's oh, part two right there. That hurt, man. And then he pit back. Yeah. Taekwon Lewis got the second hit. Mariota checked out, would not return. Elbow injury. NFL.com has the goods on him. Third quarter, Titans still down. Oh, Lane Gabbard. Hey, this young fella right here. You talking about Darius Leonard? Yes. Could be defensive uh, uh, rookie, defensive rookie of the year. Yeah, I'm Ooh. telling you. He's leading the league. Little Q dance on. Yeah. Little yeah. Omega yeah. Sci-Fi. Leonard loving it. Team, Gabbard. That's why. And, and not so much. Three plays later, Andrew Look. Luck. Take my heel again. Way to stay. Is he now. in now? Oh, yeah. He, he didn't put that heel down. down. Yeah. They say it was out of bounds at first. Cat, he, does, he does calf raises. We know his, his house built on stilts. It's banging like the Hilton. Oh, man. His heel was out. No, no, no. no, no, no not at all. That of course, y'all receivers going to stay on toes. 38 to 10. That's what you call a good old fashioned beat down Andrew Luck. 23 of 29. So let's have a gander. At those AFC South standings, the Houston Texans don't look now, but they are a team on a mission. But the Colts throwing their hat into the ring as well when it comes to division consideration. Tennessee and Jacksonville, there are still games left to be played, oh, plenty yeah. of them. So anything can happen, just like we talked about with the NFC East. But when it comes to the AFC South, Emra, who do you think is going to take the cake in this one? Because those Houston Texans, as I look over there, they won seven games in yeah. a row, man. Yeah, they have won seven games in a row. Reggie, and I know Indy's here, and I know they changed their culture, but I got to go with the Houston Texans. I, I like this team pr primarily because of what they do defensively, man. Look at this defensive front. J.J. Watt, ten sacks already. Jadavion Clowney, almost seven sacks right yep. now. When these guys are motivated and they get going, they can't be stopped up front defensively. Then you look on the other side of the ball, Deshaun Watson. I mean, what, the last seven games, who's been better? Like, who's been better at the quarterback position Andrew the last seven games? <laughs> He's been up there. But okay. I, I, this is what I think. I think the comeback player of the year is going to come out of the AFC South, whether it's Andrew Luck or Deshaun Watson. Okay. okay. Both of these guys have been playing at a high level. I like Deshaun Watson. I like the, I like his running ability. I like the fact that um, no place on the field is um, uh, unattainable for this offense. And then you look at the um, Demarius Thomas that they just got uh, out of Denver. Addition, huh? um, what an addition. A second receiver. What guy? I mean, uh, the, the, the second DB will not be able to cover this guy. Yeah. And then you have DeAndre Hopkins, who I think is the best receiver in the league. So, yes. I, like I like the Houston, Texas. Man. Yeah. Demarius Listen, Thomas, man, right? every time we talked about the South, man, I, I, first I said the Jags was going to come back strong. Then I said Flip, Tennessee. Flip James back, over there. Boy, let's get you right. Back-to-back <laughs> back wins for Tennessee against the Cowboys in uh -huh. the page. I'm like, Tennessee going to win the division. Then they go get beat up. So, oh. I'm with him, Rob. I think the Houston, Texas is a team to beat in this division. And the reason why I say that, they started 0-3. Watson was trying to make all type of plays, trying to be Michael Jordan in cleats before, like he was last season. Calm and they calmed him bit. down, yep. but Dabble they Swinney calmed him down with the running game. Lamar Miller been running it. They calmed him down, and they found that, and they have went on this streak. And obviously, if you run it and play defense like them, you're going to win a lot of ball games. But they took it out of his hands, let him run the ball. All things so, tells me and they, okay. they make so, it, hold it, hold it, the coach I'm, has a chance because he was yeah. with Houston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, yeah. They also I'm picked Green Bay to win seven a few weeks ago. Sorry, Sorry about that, James. It's just facts. Yeah. Now you got to bring it back. I mean, we can rehash that. We're talking the South. Okay, okay. So we have one Houston Texans, another Houston Texans. I know you can't stand for this. You're a Ring of Honor member. You came in on the sidecar. It's going to be tough. It's not easy with sidecar jokes. Side well, I mean, yeah. I'm I'm you could have yeah. drove. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. It's going to be tough. You know, but I think it's 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 not for the Colts to win this division. They're definitely going to, I believe, they're going to make the wild card at least. Even, even though they're going to fall to the Dallas Cowboys week 16, according to you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's okay. All right. It's all right. They, they can't win them all. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's true. Good, good call. Good they can't call. win them all, but it's, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a good one. Okay. Be a good one. I tell you one thing, man. Um, Quentin Nelson, that guard, bro. 
right now he's playing like the best guard in football, and he's a young guy. Yeah, yeah. He's a road grader. Yeah. You, you really can't get past him. And in the run game, when he sticks on you, when, when he gets his hands on you, you don't get off. So um, he is changing the culture up there in yeah. Indy, man. Yeah. I mean, they're not even putting a finger on Andrew Luck in some Listen, of these games. Andrew Luck, my he, goodness. He, in, in, in the last five weeks, he's been touched three times. Three that's times, crazy. not sacked, mm -hmm. touched. And that's, that's why winning football. That's and winning that, football. And that's right why he's putting right up here. the numbers he's putting up, too. That's right? winning it football. It has right been the secret to the Colts' success, keeping Andrew Luck clean and upright. And his jersey looking pretty good at the end of each and every single game down this back stretch. And we will continue to talk about that, plus the game that's going on at the Los Angeles College. There's a game going on? I know. If, if you're watching us and not watching the game, I mean, as much as we love total access end game here, shame on you because this is one heck of a matchup at the Coliseum. 47 to 44, and the scoring in this one, not stopping yet. Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes, they have possession, and they are on the move. Fourth and two, and they just converted a first down. Stick here. More Total Access Endgame after the break. All right, we are on the cusp of history because the Rams are looking to threaten, making some moves, moving downfield, and no team has ever scored 50 or more points and lost a game since 1940, and if the Rams crack that barrier, then uh, someone has to win, someone has to lose. So there will be someone with that designation for the first time since 1940. But in the meantime, Steelers, Jaguars, Jalen Ramsey. That boy had a game. Yeah, he yes, did. He they, did. They, they lost five in a row headed into Sunday. So let's see if they could turn things around because we know how the Wi-Fi works when Antonio Brown and Big Ben are on. <laughs> and uh, Ramsey would be shadowing A.B. all day, second quarter. Steelers down six zip, big band to A B, but Jalen Ramsey carry the verse oh, and bangles. make the pick. Hey, give me that. That was hey, that was dangerous. Yeah. But he made that play. That's a nice play. That's right the play. Yeah. Undercut it there. Yeah, that's yeah but the play. No, that, that was that scene thing. That's that was scene rope scene yeah. route. Yeah. That's his play at 3D. Yep. Later in the quarter, Let Big Ben again. To Antonio <laughs> Brown, but Barry Church had other plans, guys. Yes, he did. Listen. The confidence that, that the Jags match up, play with against the Pittsburgh. They match up well against them. Yeah, yeah they, they do. do. They, really they do. just match up well. Yeah. 53 yeah. yards for Big Ben, two picks. Juju like the they on AB. Yeah, if he come on over here, don't be me. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Move in, let him spin. Let, let's head to the third quarter. Steelers still down 9 zip. Big oh, Ben to AB. That was Jaylen another play. Again. That was, hey, man. Yeah. He heard them. He heard them trade talks before the before the, before the Ooh, game. Like he showed, showed up, and he had a bad game last week against yeah. uh, Tennessee Titans. Jalen, uh, I mean, uh, Indianapolis like Colts. Yeah. Extra spicy, crispy, fantastic catch. Look, when Jaylen, when throw the juju. Jalen is on yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't throw my way. All right. Throw the juju. Pick of the day. How about Leonard Fournette? That's Uncle Leonard. Yeah, okay, it, it it's is. Uncle. That's somebody Uncle right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like he's running the grill at the family reunion. Jacksonville. That would count as a touchdown for them. Steelers. They would get the ball back. Big Ben to A.B. and A.B. If you had him on your fantasy no, team, you can't do. you'd be feeling pretty doggone good because 78 yards. Well, you putting can't. that Jacksonville D in the rear view, Reggie. You, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't give Big Ben all that time. No, bro. no, no. You're going to find somebody. Find somebody. Look, Look at the this. route. Look how long the route take. Like, I mean, you ain't supposed to cover Come this on. long. That's yeah. That's and that's not on Jalen Ramsey. No. No. What happens when Antonio Brown gets seven and a half yards of separation? What do you think? Touchdown. He's probably yeah. on that. What we just yeah. saw right there. That was pretty much a layup question. Steelers now within 10 after they couldn't get the two-point combo to go. But later in the fourth, Steelers possession still down 16-6. Big Ben to the guy who said, why don't you try to throw my way? It's Juju again. 16-6 with three minutes and 40 seconds. Man, that, that's and, over Jalen Ramsey. Man, a little different. Playing with fire, too. Four plays later, Big Ben all day to the king of the stiff arm, Vance McDonald. Oh, they need to get Vance going more. I'm telling you. Mm. More of a tight end presence for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he's yeah. strong. Look he at is. A ball that had no more air. In there. Three receptions, 27 yeah. yards, and that touchdown. He's part of the feather in Big Ben's cap. Next to a possession, Roethlisberger again. Juju. The Juju fighting on like a USC Trojan at the Jags. 27, 35-yard no pickup right there. Stands to get that catch, and Roethlisberger says, guys, we got to hurry up. We got to hurry up. So oh, good, the good old pick play. Yeah, that's a good little pick right there. Mm. To A.B. with Ramsey on him again. Yeah. Yeah, down oh, short of the house. <laughs> Brown loving it. 117 so yards on five on catches. Then Ryan Switzer from Big Ben. But it's oh. D.J. Hayden. You saw that? Flag on the play. Oh, man. Oh, man. Flag on the play. Yeah. 
Oh. And as we're talking, there, there are fireworks going on during Monday <laughs> no. Night Football. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, we're guys. just a little distracted. But either way, Big Ben takes that one all by himself. First and goal. Well, you know what? Gets it done just like this, guys. Oh, that that might, might, we said it matched up well against him, but the difference is the quarterback position. Yeah. Yep. That is the difference between these two teams. This was exactly. A, this was a huge win right here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And yeah, I know they was. came in hot, but to come back like this on a good Jags defense and finish a game Man, on the road. beat them for the three road, and a half, for three beat quarters them up. and yeah. what, a minute. And yeah. to come back and win this game, that's huge. So, that's Steelers, huge. they come back. They get the W 20 to 16. They've now won six in a row. Last year, they they rattled off eight straight at one point. Of course, we know they fell in the divisional round. But when you take a look at the AFC, the Steelers currently in the thick of the mix. Is this a team that can make some noise down the stretch? Are they the best team in the AFC? Or is there someone else that you may be wanting to throw in that mixture? They definitely can make some noise. Okay. They're a good football team. But it's a game going on yeah, right now yeah, with yeah, an yeah. AFC team yeah. in it right I'm now. I'm looking over your shoulder at it right now. <laughs> 51 <laughs> points on okay. right now. So, I'm going to say no, the Pittsburgh Steelers are not the best team in the AFC right now. Can they fight with some of these teams? Absolutely. They got a very good football team. But the Kansas City Chiefs look untouchable. Okay. And I know they, it's going down to the wire right now, but I'm still going with the Kansas City okay. Chiefs. Okay, the, the Kansas City team. Chiefs. Oh, Kansas by the way, just to remind you at home, they do have one loss on the season, and it comes right off of Interstate 95 yep. to those New England Patriots. Ooh, Reggie, you said, yeah, with best team like. in the AFC. Who are you going with? I'm going with New England because when that playoff starts, they're a different ball you, team. You know how it goes. They've Ooh, been there yeah. before over and over Ooh. and over again. You got to beat it's these like guys. It's like an old hat. Yeah, you, yeah. you got to beat these guys. One thing about Coach Bel Belichick and Tom Brady, whenever it's playoff football, they know how to win games. I don't care how explosive you are, they find ways to slow you down. They just do it to us all the time. Yeah. They got to go all on the, the road. time. They, they got to go you, on the road. They make you have there. 12 play drives. They try to bore you. Mm -hmm. And teams get bored and try to go for the gusto mm -hmm. and that's when the turnover happens and that's when you be playing from behind if they were playing at home I would agree with you Reg but they're gonna be on the road playing in Pittsburgh or playing in Kansas City and I don't know if they can get the job done well we don't, we don't know if they're gonna be on the road yet I mean still, yeah, still, yeah, still still some more, yeah, some, some more of the season left Kansas City let Watch some of these Kansas games go okay. see, so. So, well so I mean teams gonna be but, but, but just like KC to, and you know we know who you like and how about you which way are you going well, I tend to agree with Reggie here just simply New because England, okay. until somebody actually beats Be New England, beat, you, you know what I'm saying, and like really beat them in the playoffs, it's hard not to say that Tom Brady and these guys are going to be back there. But I will say this. Uh, Andy Reid's history says that later on in the season, people start to figure out his offenses. I haven't seen it yet, guys. Yeah, yeah. I have not seen guys. I have not seen mm -hmm. defenses figure out what Andy Reid is trying to do. Why? Because they just have so many weapons and they have a live arm at quarterback. Um, <clears throat> and then when you look at uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, it seems like for, for whatever reason, they play down the bad competition, yep. right? Yep. You know, no, it's Pittsburgh, you need to beat the teams you're supposed, supposed to, to beat, beat right? Yeah. And don't just be, get up for the games that, uh, that are primetime games or big games. And one thing about Pittsburgh Steelers, we know who their nemesis is in the playoffs. New England. New England they Patriots. New England. That you got to find a way to beat them. And until you beat them, that is going to continue. I will, to I will say this, though. Tom Brady looked mortal last week um, against the Tennessee <laughs> Titans. Yo, he he a, did. He, he looked, he looked older, up, man. The team looked mortal. Yeah. He looked older, man. I'm just telling no, you, bro. No grunk on in that tape. one, so. No he grunk. looked yeah. older, bro. Are y'all watching but, the same game I'm watching on Monday night? The Kansas City Chiefs? Oh, okay. I'm just checking. I'm just I'm just to stop somebody. You know what I'm saying? to stop somebody. I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. But what about some of those in the hunt wild card teams, the Los Angeles Chargers? I like the Chargers. Just when you think that they're on a roll, that little setback finally starts to they set did in. Take, they did take a setback, take away the turnovers they beat. They win that game. But you can't take those week. back. You can't take it back now. <laughs> I know that, Cole. Okay. The game is over. I know that. They lost the game. But they can run the ball with the best of any uh, team in the National Football League. Okay. They can run the football. Oh, am, I am I doing the highlights? Am I doing the highlights? Right, right. Look at Philip Rivers sitting there talking Rupert about he's going to throw some so. touchdowns. First and goal. And then he Phil goes Rivers. back and throws a touchdown. You know what I'm saying, Cole? You can go ahead and pick it up now, man. He looks like he could be a, a center these days. <laughs> oh, <laughs> easy. Go ahead, He's Cole. a legend. He's a big man. He's getting it done. But the kicking was concurrent oh, for the Chargers. Oh, obviously, about, that's not Von Miller. Chargers. Von Miller. Von Miller. Miller. <laughs> Von Miller. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing double duty right here. Von, Von Miller. He's special. Von Miller. He's a playmaker. Player.
and so was Tyreek Hill on that last catch. But either way, continuing with the Chargers highlight, currently 19-7 at that point. So fourth quarter, Phil Rivers with a little chit-chat on the sideline. Geno oh. Smith I like on looking. I don't like when he chit-chat like that, Cole. Two point. No! It worries me, Cole. Oh. Yeah, he threw it into the dirt, but Von Miller would have picked that football off again. That's why he did it. Yeah. Okay. So, it was a great defensive it play. It all rests in the Pace. hands and arm of Case Keenum. Second and five. Oh. Spreading it around, Pick. making things happen. My bad, guys. Not I'm yet. sorry. <laughs> yeah. That was an interception by the Rams. My bad. So, I was hyped. So, Brandon McManus, he, all he could do was sit and watch. So, third and seven. Keenum. Oh. Again. Case Keenum. These Denver Broncos. That's making why they, the case that's for why themselves. They late in the contest. That's exactly you see, what Vance they Joseph man. says, guys, yeah. we got to get to the line. We got to spike this. We got to get Brandon a chance. So, second and ten. Warm embraces all the way around Man, from first, 34 baby. yards away. Don't mind if I do. Hey, McManus doing kicks. the deed right Big there kicks. in Denver, getting themselves a win, moving to four and six on the season. The Chargers dropping to seven and three. And like we said, every time you think that the, that the Los Angeles Chargers are right there, they're, they're on the move. There's that setback. Each I think and every this is a different season. year. I think this is a different year. The kicking woes Cole. continue. The kicking woes continue. They're running the ball with some authority. You know that. You know what Philip Rivers can do. He's a, a future Hall of Famer. Uh, they're getting one of. They're getting their best defensive player back in Joey Bosa, who just started to get get cranking. I mean, come on, man. Think I about like the it. other pass rush on the other side too. He's cool too. Joey Bosa be <laughs> balling, man. And I like Derwin James in the back. And that kid is a playmaker. He's he, he's always around the football. He has range to play the back end. He blitzes the quarterback and he makes tackles in the box. They have a defense yeah. and they have yeah. a championship Melvin team. Gordon, I think. I mean, the Chargers, Reggie. Did you think they were here? And then after yesterday's game, they pretty much reminded you that they were right there. You know what? I, I I've always been skeptical okay. of the Chargers. Mm. I've always. And I don't know if it's the history behind this team where they always let you down somewhere throughout the season. And I'm just worried if they peak too early. No, I wonder if they started out too hot, you know what I mean, and now they're about to start getting those woes, like they're kicking, starting yeah. to show up again. A uh, um, couple of uh, misplays here and there, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm just, I'm, I just got a question mark behind them. They're balling. Like you said earlier, there's a lot of football left to be it played. Is. And uh, they still got it in, in that division with that – uh, you know, with Kansas City and yep. things like that. So they're going to be playing from behind for a while. So I just want to know if they can keep it up. I'm a believer in the Chargers. Are, are you? They would have made things a whole lot easier if they would have won yesterday and yeah. say for some reason Kansas City, City loses. loses. They had the exact same record. And then they, they played a division game. Let's hold on a second. Exactly. Exactly. And, that, and that's where I'm going. When you play division games, it don't matter what the record is. These games are hard to win. I remember we used to play the Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears used to be 1-8. and eight. We come in there 8-0. And, no, and if you look in the man. fourth quarter, 7-7. Seven, seven. Division games is hard to win. Yeah, I was scared so, but from top <laughs> to bottom, offense, defense, special teams, this is a very good football team. Look, they had a bad game, yeah. could have won the game still, turned the ball over, but this is the division game. They know the Chargers. Chargers know them. They came out on top, but I'm still a believer. They'll get, they'll get their things. Well, first. how about this? How important was that game? Because you have Denver, a team that's down on their luck when it comes to the record. If you win that one, and then you have another home game yeah. against Arizona. So back-to-back yeah. -back games against teams that are pretty much in the outhouse. Absolutely. Hey, look, every game is important, okay. especially yes. in the division. You want to win those ball games. Yeah. But look, you can never look past an opponent. And sometimes when an opponent's records like that, you can look past them and not play your best game. And they didn't play their best no. game, and they got beat. You, you didn't see that a Ring of Honor recipient wanted to talk? Yes, he wanted yeah. to talk. You know, you know what I mean? But I had to get my <laughs> points out. No, I got you. <laughs> Did you see that, the, the, the remaining schedule? Yeah. Did you see what they got? They still got Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. They got the Bengals, who you don't know what you're going to get out of them. Yeah. You got the Chiefs. You got the Ravens. You got the Broncos. They ended out. Yeah. You don't yeah, have no yeah. time to be going backwards. Uh -huh. They got them, too, because the Chargers is a good football team. Yeah, they that's true. Play the Chargers. We've, huh? seen, we've seen the Chargers melt okay. down down the stretch before. Yes, so. we have. It's a new year, Cole. Yeah. yeah. We're living you know in the past, past it's a new year, Cole. We're living I'm in just, the past, I'm just, man. I'm just saying, and, until, like Reggie said, he's skeptical. Until they show us <laughs> otherwise, we'll have to see. They've so. been showing us otherwise this year. Well, they just okay. went out there and we lost to the Denver Broncos, <laughs> so apparently they didn't show us Except otherwise. And then they week. have the Except Arizona Cardinals week, coming bro. in this week, so we will see if they'll be able to stand strong at StubHub. And in this game right now at the Los Angeles Coliseum, as good as it mm. gets currently. Got trying to turn to this to feels like a playoff game. 52 a playoff. seconds left in this one, and it's going to come down to the wire. Yeah, Tyreek Hill taking it out of the paint. This one. 
is as fun as it gets. He takes it out to the 15-yard line. Oh, so something he tells me it. there's going to be fireworks coming down the stretch. As you see, Patrick Mahomes lighting it up, 31 of 42. Oh. 464 <laughs> yards. I yes, which was about to say. Correct. Six <laughs> touchdowns, but he does have those miscues, those two interceptions. <laughs> and if you just tuned in, if you hadn't watched any of this game, 54 to 51, you would think there's zero defense played in this contest with the Los Angeles Rams. They've gone out there and they played a little bit of defense in this game, Mike Robinson. Yeah, they have played a, a, lot, a lot of a lot of defense. I mean, Aaron Donald it doesn't look like it, but yes, Aaron right. Donald. Yeah. I mean, they no, have. Like the it ain't good. Yeah. <laughs> but look, think about it, right? It's, in 2018, <laughs> it's very hard to play defense in this league. Because pass rushes are hard to find, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. That's what they call. Come on. You all in the past today. You all in the past today. All I'm saying is when you got a guy like Aaron Donald, the best defensive player in the National Football yeah. League, this guy makes signature plays, and he had a couple tonight by stripping uh, the quarterback and, and, and creating turnovers to give his ball – to give – his offense extra uh, possession. And that's the key. Don't look at the yards and all yep. that type of stuff. They turned the ball over and scored on defense. That's huge. Okay, speaking of scoring and scoring on defense, this Los Angeles Rams team, they have been a bull in a china shop on the defensive side of the ball. They are currently clinging to a three-point lead at the house, 54-51. to 51. This one almost reaching its finale. As soon as it wraps, we're bringing you a full hour. Stick around right here. When it comes to offensive output and just scoring in general, this one, well, it was like the Thriller in Manila. I mean, it was high-powered, heavyweight matchup from front to back. The third highest combined point total in the history of the National Football League. Yeah, Redskins and Giants Week 12. That's when the Giants scored 72 points and the G-Men rattled off 41, 113 combined. But this Rams and Chiefs game, a whole different brand. And our guy, Steve Weich, after the game, he caught up with that cinder block wrapped in barbed wire. Aaron Donald, here they are. Aaron, first off, congratulations on the win. But to be part of a game like this, 54-51, to what was the feeling to walk out of here with that victory so back and forth? Um, it's good. You don't ever want to have a high-scoring game like that, but both sides of the ball, both defenses made, made big plays and scored points. But, you know, to be victorious and, and, and play a tough game and pull it out at the end, you know, it, it's definitely a good feeling. So, What was it like when Jared hit that long ball to, to hit to Gerald Everett there to seal it for you? A lot of excitement. You know, we knew we had to get back on the field as a defense and trying to close it out, and we did that. So, you know, just a great team win, and, and like I said, we 10-1. All right, lastly, two big sacks here. One strip, uh, you know, the scoop and score. The other led to another touchdown. What about your game tonight? Um, got room for improvement, but just making plays when it presented itself. Um, took advantage, seen the ball, um, got the ball out a couple times. So, happy that I, I, I contributed, but I got a lot of room for improvement. So. All right, well, congratulations, man. Yeah, thank you. Well, like my pops always like to say, the biggest room in the house is the room for improvement. And Aaron Donald, he knows that all too well. 54 to 51, his Los Angeles Rams now moving to 10 and 1 on the season. And Mike, we watched this game from start to finish. Yeah, all of us, when you talk about big ticket takeaways, what was yours in this matchup? Yeah, other than Aaron Donald, which we know is the best defensive player in the National Football League, the fact that this 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 Rams team, three, you know, five turnovers, um, 21 points off of three interceptions. I mean. The, 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 to have the wherewithal right after a, a quick change of possession to go out there and be successful. You guys know how hard that is. Yeah. Oftentimes, people are just happy to get the turnover. But no, yeah. this team turns turnovers into points, and you have to do that in this league if you want to truly be a championship team. When you take the ball away from the other team, you have to make them pay uh, for that. And I think the I thought the offensive play calling in this game was amazing. Uh, the play designs, all the offense that went along with this thing, um, the NFL world got a treat tonight seeing these two offenses, these two teams, and these two head coaches. Absolutely. It is the holiday season. We're extremely thankful for this Monday night matchup just a few days ahead of Thanksgiving and with a 54-51 to 51 final score. Mm -hmm. Reggie, there, there's so many things that we can touch on, but anything jump off the page to you in particular in this one? Well, the one thing is the Kansas City Chiefs. They was in the driver's seat, they and they didn't, they didn't look like a number one seeded team with all of the the, the penalties, mm -hmm. especially in the first half, yeah, they had 13 penalties for 135 yards. You're not going to win a game, even though it was in it to the end. Yeah. But mm -hmm. when it comes crunch time, playoff football, 13 penalties for 135 yards, that'll get you blown out, yeah. especially going against a top team like a New England Patriots, who's notorious for winning games in the playoffs. So that's the one thing that stuck out to me during this game. They got to find a way to tighten that up. How about you, Jay? Just watching the game, I kind of felt that the Rams' defense knew coming into the game, like, they're going to get a lot of yards. Mm -hmm. 
but we got to get some takeaways. And you could see, you could just see them keep pounding, keep pounding, keep pounding. Listen, everybody going to look at the stats, you're going to see 33, 478 yards, six TDs. But to get takeaways like that, that is winning football. And it's going to be it's going to be hard to beat the Rams if they taking the ball away. Don't look at the stats. That could be a little bit deceiving. They got turnovers yeah, and won this ball game. And like you said, sometimes those stats can be misleading because if someone told you that Todd Gurley would have 12 rushing <laughs> right. attempts, 55 Ooh. yards, and zero touchdowns, and the Rams would still beat the Kansas City Chiefs at home 54-51, to 51, most folks would tell you that you're crazy. But that's exactly how things went down. It was a balanced offensive attack from those Rams. And we're going to head back out to the Los Angeles Coliseum because Lindsey Rhodes and Willie McGinnis are holding things down just a little bit past your bedtime, you two. <laughs> It's way past my yeah. bedtime, but that is totally fine with me tonight. This game was so much fun to be at it the was. electricity here at the Coliseum. It felt like everyone here knew that they were witnessing something incredibly special, uh, which I think it's fair to say we did. Willie McGinnis, I mean, good grief, 54 <laughs> to 51. Can you remember a game like this in your recent memory? No, not at all. But there's been a lot of games with over, what, 1,000 yards. And we, we talked about it. I think James was right on point with this. Don't look at the stats. Don't look at what happened in numbers. It's, you know, coming into this game, we said which defense was going to be able to make crucial stops in the right situations. When you score 21 points off of whether strip sacks right here, Aaron Donald, he had two strip sacks. Both of these strip sacks turned into 14 points. And then you had Epochum, who scored a pick six. So you got 21 points that the defense gave you tonight. And then you ended the game with two interceptions to cap it. So you got to make crucial uh, plays in crucial situations. You can't expect to stop these high-flying offenses, but you got to find ways to slow them down. And when the game is on the line, make big plays like they did tonight. So is that a mindset or like help me wrap my brain around the fact that this Rams defense <laughs> made such big plays and you watch it and you think, oh, my gosh, this Rams defense is so good. And then you look at the stat sheet and you realize they gave up 546 yards and 51 points. Like, are they good or they are, are they, they what they, are they? They're good enough to win a football game. And in games like this, you're not going to stop the Kansas City Chiefs. They are too good offensively. The goal is to slow them down. Now, you don't want to go out and say, hey, we're going to give up 51 points, you know, and, our, and, and the Rams, and we're going to score 55 to beat them. No, that's not the ideal situation going in. But this is the way the game went. When the game was on the line, teams made, this, you know, made, made stops, key stops in certain situations. And I'll take this. Like, I'll take an ugly win over a beautiful loss any day. Does that work against the Saints? Does it work against the Patriots? No, I mean, those teams, like, even when Kansas City played the Patriots, they didn't stop them, but they made stops when they needed to. They stopped them from scoring in the red zone three times, which made the difference in the game. When you play the Saints, you're not going to stop them offensively, but you got to make key stops in certain situations. You can't continuously give high-flying offenses opportunities, and that's what happens. Ten different people scored there touchdowns in this one. I'm good, man. My goodness. What's up? What's up, man? How you feeling, man? Pretty good. Pretty damn you got to have more energy than that, man. You was all nah. over the place tonight. You scored. You got in the end zone. You made big plays in crucial situations. Is this something you guys talked about? For sure, for sure. We always try to capitalize on all the opportunities that we can get. Especially as a defense, uh, we've been getting a lot of criticism because our offense is so good. So tonight, just kind of uh, uh, like me, Aaron, like uh, Sue, uh, Dante, every, everybody in the D-line, uh, we decided to just like put a little extra in today and then everybody else uh, followed with it. Uh, and we got multiple interceptions and multiple turnovers and that's what we've been trying to do. I'm sorry, Liz. We got to give my man a, a proper introduction. He just, he just came on the set. I mean, you're like the expert <laughs> at saying his name. Though. I'm sorry, Samson. Ebukum. Yep. Did I say that right? Are we saying yep. that right? Samson. Ebukum. Say, say your name for us. Ebukum. Okay. Yeah. Ebukum. Mm -hmm. Samson. You yeah. You played with a lot of strength tonight, dog. Man. <laughs> it's got to be a good feeling. God, God bless me, man. That's all I can say, man. He blessed me tonight. Now, Are you exhausted? What was that game like? Because I'm exhausted just from, like, watching it. Yeah, it was really up and down. I kind of knew that was going to uh, be something like that because uh, both offenses are really good. So we knew that there was going to be points on the board. Uh, we just had to make sure that we had more at the end. That's it. When you're playing a high-flying offense like the Kansas City Chiefs, you can't stop everything. But I know being in the defensive meeting rooms, when you go into the meeting room, what's the one thing you guys said coming into the game you had to do? Limit explosive plays. Right. Because that cha that changes the whole momentum for everything. We can, we can uh, 
uh, keep with them, like just getting uh, little little yards and like making them drive down the field. But we have to keep uh, all those expl uh, explosive plays away because that just changes the whole game. Do you guys know you almost scored as many points on defense than they did on offense? You guys scored. You guys were responsible for 21 points off of turnovers. No way. Your pick six, yeah, on defense. I, I really didn't even know that. Honestly, but that's good stuff for us. <laughs> so tell me about this uh, Kansas City offense. Now that you've played them, you've seen them up close. What do you see as their strengths and their weaknesses? They're able to communicate, line up, and just play fast. And they have a lot of speed on the offense. There's a lot of speed. So, you know, uh, I'm just glad that we got the dub today. But they're, they're definitely a good offense. They're a top uh top three offense in the in the league. What type of confidence does it give you guys going forward? You played against possibly one of the best teams, if not some people say the best team in the AFC. Going forward, you guys have been through a lot, and now what, you're 10-1. Mm -hmm. What does this do for you guys moving forward? Uh, it's definitely um, good for us to be 10-1 because now we can uh, try, try to get the top two. Uh, in the conference, you said we could have that uh, second bye week, but we needed. Are this. you already thinking about the bye week? Uh, of course, like because <laughs> you, you, you have to. Right. Right. You, you, you really have to think about it, because like you, you want to be uh, make sure that uh, that your body is healthy as much as it can be throughout the whole season, because it's, right. it's a long grind. Mm -hmm. And this bye week right now hit us perfectly, and thank God that we came out with a, uh, a W. You know what bye week I was talking about, right? Oh yeah, playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you get to sit at home and watch everybody else yep. play. Yeah, num number one seed mm -hmm. in the I NFC. Didn't, I thought you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, that's the bye no, week no, 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 I was no, no, talking no, about. No, I'm talking the, about the second bye week. The big, the second bye mm -hmm. week. Samson, I want to ask you real quick about uh, how important was it for you guys to get the win after the game was kind of made about like right. LA. We're doing this for you. Did, was there a sense of like we have to win this game now? Oh yeah, for sure. But we try to like limit. Uh, all the all the outside uh, things that that was coming in, but we knew we had to win this for LA just to like bring a positive vibe into the community because there's been a lot of stuff that's happened here. So this W definitely uh, definitely helped out with that. Great job, great job. Samson, I think I need to smile. See a smile. <laughs> I mean, you got to be excited. Just, man. That was a good win. Like I can't game. be the most man, excited I try, I person tried, to man. add this stuff. You guys just played with, the way you did. Yeah, I, I gotta thank uh, AD for sure, for sure, because he takes a lot of that stress out uh, out from us. So you know, he got two strip sacks today. I didn't even know. They just told me inside. I'm just like, again. Yeah, again. <laughs> <laughs> That's how all of us it's feel. Just, okay. It's just normal. So you know, I got I gotta thank all of them, and uh, the, definitely the DBs for covering uh, downfield, the linebackers for covering downfield, just uh, giving us an extra extra second just to get to that quarterback he's a, he's a hard person to get down. I was going to say it was a down. good team effort, man. Mm -hmm. Everybody made plays. It wasn't just coming from one position. Mm -hmm. All you guys stepped in and made big plays tonight, exactly. man. You guys did a great job. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Love you. Appreciate that. it. Appreciate it. We'll send it back to you, yeah, have Paul. Have a good one. Thank you, Lindsey. And Howard, she must be asleep because this Rams <laughs> offense, it's clearly high-powered. And much of that coming from Jared Goff, that he is a straw that stirs the drink when it comes to this team right there. All things go through him as well as Todd Gurley. And if anyone knows that, it's the front man for this Los Angeles Rams. Sean McVay, if you haven't heard, he's only 32 years old. Here he is talking tonight's game. Okay, uh, I want to start out uh, just recognizing the first responders how instrumental they've been in, in helping keep our community together through some real adversity. And uh, it was great to have those guys here tonight. Uh, what a great football game tonight in terms of just a competitive nature of the game. Uh, guys responding back and forth, all three phases, special teams, offense, defense. You have so much respect for Coach Reed and the Chiefs. You see why they're one of the best teams in football. Uh, but I thought our guys did an outstanding job together uh, tonight, just sticking together, uh, staying connected, not letting the circumstances dictate the way that we responded, and uh, finding a way to get a big win. And, and they'll certainly make our buy a little bit more enjoyable and then we'll come back ready to go for the last stretch of the season but you guys go ahead any words for your fans in mexico yeah, you know, it was, it was uh, disappointing that we weren't able to, to play there. I know there was a lot of guys, that, and we were excited about the opportunity to play in front of a, a great atmosphere and an environment. But, um, you know, it was, it was a fun night tonight, and uh, our team really enjoyed that. And, and I thought it was great for our community in the city of L.A., especially with everything going on. But we certainly were, uh, you know, disappointed we didn't get a chance to play there. Can you talk a bit about the ebbs and flow of the game? Up a couple of times, a couple of digits and down. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, one of the most, you know, competitive games I've been a part of since I've been coaching in this league. You know, you talk about back and forth and a lot of points, but, you know, it, a lot of it was a representation. A couple defensive touchdowns for us. They had a defensive touchdown. So I thought it was a really just a, a competitive game with a lot of high caliber football in all three phases. And, and you see why 
Uh, they're a nine and one team coming into this game. Uh, Coach Reed's done such a great job, and I have so much respect. Look up to him, the way that he leads, the consistency at which he operates, and um, you know that that's something that it was it was a great job just by both teams. You know, being able to deliver a great product tonight. All right, let's take a look at this Chiefs and Rams matchup offensively because when it comes to combined points, the third highest output in the history of the National Football League. Gaudy, most would say. Combined total yards, yeah, they did surpass that 1,000-yard barrier. Combined passing yards, it's a smooth 827. And fourth quarter lead changes, yeah, safe to say it was back and forth, four of them. And, of course, the Rams, when all the dust settled, coming away with that 54-51 to 51 lead. Now, the Rams' offense, well, they were as good as it gets. Their defense played a part in this one as well. But all the talk that comes with all the different wide receivers, Todd Gurley, not a whole bunch of love coming for Jared Goff. We talked about him during the highlight, but 31 of 49, 413 yards, Reggie. Not one, not two, not three, but four touchdowns. Why is he not getting enough love right about now? It, because there are so many weapons That's on that team. Uh, you got to pick your poison each week whenever you're preparing for this Rams team. But Jared Goff is good. He's doing, he, he's he doing makes well. He those weapons that much better. I, I, listen, I, I can, I'm one of the first ones when his rookie year, I was like, uh, yeah. they might have made a mistake on this one. But it just shows you the difference uh, of a, a first-year guy and a second-year player. Um, he's going in. Yeah, I mean, you know, Coach McVay is going to dial up all the right plays. Uh, he's, he's one of the young the, one, the young play callers in this league that, that can score in various ways. But he's got Jared Goff playing at a high, high level right now. And you can tell all the his teammates, they love everything about him. Yeah. And, I, and I will say this with Jared Goff. He don't get a lot of respect because the guy in the backfield is up for the MVP. And everybody thought well, the guy, the tonight, guy in the backfield yeah. carries this team. And he showed tonight that he can do that, sure. that he can be that guy. Todd Gurley, he didn't play well today. And Jared Goff put him on the back and won, put up 57 points, won mm -hmm. this game. So I think that's why he don't get a lot of respect because everybody's like, Todd Gurley is the MVP on that team, maybe possibly the MVP of the league. And he didn't play well tonight. And Jared Goff showed that I'm that guy too. Yeah, Jared Goff second in the league in passing yards, second to only the guy he played tonight, Patrick Mahomes. Jared Goff, someone's going to have to start a campaign for this cat to get some more love. Well, God. he's a baller. He's not flashy, though. He's yeah. not a guy that's going to, you know, uh, dress up like Cam does, you know, <laughs> and, and look a certain way at, at the post-game press conference. When he does interviews, he's not a loud guy. He's just going to say the, you know, the politically correct things in front of the camera, which is, the, that's just who he is. But watch this guy on tape, and I know I'm going to say this, and y'all going to say, Mike, shut up, man. But I'm telling you, this guy's very close mechanically to Tom Brady. Very, very close Mike mechanically. Mike I knew y'all was going to say that, right? But look, when we leave here, y'all go check the tape and just watch how he manipulates the pocket. Watch how he uses his eyes to move the defense. Watch how, you know, that front leg kind of never moves. He stays in a position ready to throw the ball every single time. His, his mechanics are off, are off the charts. And I think using that and you couple that with Todd Gurley behind him, and you have a creative play caller who um, is always in his ear, always helping him out. Um, I love Jared Goff, and again, I think he doesn't get the love and respect across the league because he's just not a flashy guy. Who would you compare him to again? Tom Brady. Okay, well, you know who has the most wins in the National Football League since last season? Who, me? It's Jer Jared Goff. Oh. Jared Goff. Who, me? Turn, yeah, turn win. 21 wins since the beginning <laughs> of 2017. And uh, quite the comparison to compare him to the GOAT, Tom Brady. And if anyone knows how good that man is, it's Willie McGinnis, who's out there again at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Look at that cheese on Drew Lindy. Face. Yeah. He thinks he's a damn cheese. He thinks he's a damn cheese. He can't stop cheese on Drew, man. Gang, take it away. Is he talking crazy? You guys, the funniest part about this is we didn't give MJD and I a fee, so he can't hear Anything that oh, you're saying. So if there's anything else that you feel like you need to get off your chest, over now over. is the time. He's like, what are they saying? <laughs> Just like Tom Brady, Mike Rob. Oh man, I mean, they both from the Bay Area. <laughs> Y'all are jumping right on it. That's where it all starts. Right it. It. That's That's where it all I got you, dog. You said the mechanics the are the same. That's you said what the I'm mechanics saying. Are the same. It's all good. And, you know, and going into that, Mike, what you talked about, and Sean McVay, his play design. We talked about this pregame, MJD, about. What would they do without Cooper Cup? How would they move Robert Woods around? How would they use the tight ends? It seemed like with an injury, uh, regardless of who's out there, 
they figured out different ways to put guys in position still to mix up this defense and make big plays. Right, Gerald Everett came up huge in the second half. I mean, the Rams do a great job with second half adjustments for some reason. They try to make them in the game. They really can't do it. But once they get in the locker room, kind of take a deep breath, they're like, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to attack them. And they found Swordson in the second half. And Gerald Everett had a day. Now, they try to do some trick plays and find some plays to catch the defense off guard. They couldn't do it. But Robert Woods showed up. Josh Reynolds showed up. Brandon Cook showed up. All these guys that you're looking for showed up. I know Todd didn't have his best day, but he really didn't have yeah. the opportunities. And I think it's because, you know, we're in, we're in week 11 right now. H hasn't had a break. He's been carrying the load for a long time. It was time for the other guys to kind of step up and make a play. Get him some rest this bye week. They, uh, from what I heard, it's a no, see you Monday. No. Next next Monday, it's a see you Monday. I'm not giving you that fine. MJD pregame. What did he say, Lindsey? I, I was About ready. Uh, I thought what he was going to run him. My he, sources are wrong. He said that they yeah, were going to run. Control the clock. Control the, the clock. They're going to slow the game down and keep Pat Mahomes off the field with Gurley. I thought. And it and seemed, now it makes but you sense did. But you did say this. You did say as soon as they're one one run or one negative play, it's air attack. And I, I mean, and it wasn't really a negative play. I don't think running the ball. They just didn't get a big gash that they thought they could. Remember, the Chiefs came in as one of the worst run defenses there were right. in the league, and they they kind of they they were stout against the run today. Um, but again. Knowing both these sides, knowing Andy Reid, knowing Sean McVay. They got into a little competition. Yeah, they got, it was a little competition <laughs> going on, which is a good thing. Great, the Rams came out on the right side. Um, but the big thing now is getting healthy. You get to lead back after the bye, which is huge for this defense. Right. Um, you found a way to survive and, and, and get a, a victory at a shootout, which was, you know, I mean, 54, 51, 105 points in a game. Have you ever been a part of the? I, no. Like, no lie. I, I, no, absolutely not. I mean, I think not. you have against USC, but you were on the <laughs> losing end. It was like 66 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, we averaged 50 that year, so it, it happened. We averaged 50 that year. We, we only scored 32 <laughs> okay. in that game, so uh, it's You all mentioned good. Tlaib. I want to I wanna talk to you about that for right. just a sec. When he comes back, how does that change things for this defense and make this a different team moving forward? Well, it's scarier. I think he's similar to, to my guy here on defense. Willie, when something went wrong with the Patriots, you know who I, when I watched your football life, you were like, hey, man, get yeah, it right. That's would. Tlaib. Right. That's what Tlaib does. They don't have that guy right now that can tell guys what, what's going not on. Not on the back end. Yeah, on the back end. They're not right. that vocal. You got young guys trying to step up and be that. But Tlaib is that, that veteran that you need that knows the system, been in it, right. won a Super Bowl in this system. So he's going to make sure. And on the sidelines, if you're watching him, he's coaching guys on the sideline right yeah. next to Wave Hills, getting the call, giving signals out. He's doing his best. So when you get him back, it's like having another coach on the field that can help some of these okay. back end mistakes All where right. you have. I give you, you have, props now because you said exactly what Marcus Peters said pregame. Oh, okay. He said we've been lacking a little bit because our leader hasn't been out there. There you go. And he's the vocal force, and he's the veteran guy. He keeps us all intact. And when he comes back, you'll see things start to gel a little bit better. So, I'm, so you know a little something hey, about what's listen, going on. Listen, I, I try to figure things out here and there. Do you see Tyree Hill running Not wide here. open? Well, that, that's Sam Shields fell. That, that, yeah, failed. but that's communication issues because if he know if he if you're in cover three and you know that you have the deep third, you're not going to try to drive on that deep in route. Right. You're going to run back with the deep guy. Get back and that's trying to go across There the you face. go. That's your right. communication issues there. So that'll be fixed, and then it'll allow Aaron Down and those guys to get to the quarterback. They still have to fix Which their run defense. They're doing game. anyway. Yeah, they still got to fix their run defense. So they, they have to find ways to stop it. The Chiefs just didn't want to run it today. Right. They wanted to let it rip, and then they did a good job with it. MJD, we're going to send it back to the studio. Is there anything that you would like to say yeah, to anybody? Listen. Inside? But can we get the little split box up? <laughs> Seventh grade Reggie, man, congratulations. Oh. On, uh, <laughs> you went on, inducted to the ring of honor. Man, you deserve it. Uh, we can learn from this. Uh, it's a great experience. Two heavyweights going against each other. You obviously can't give up um, 21 points when you're in a game like this. Um, and we did that on turnovers. We got to take care of the take care of the football. Um, um, on the other hand, we we also uh, created some turnovers and, and points there. So, uh, but too many penalties. A lot of penalties in that first quarter. Uh, I don't know about all those, but, I, you know, they, they called them. And so uh, we, we were going backwards when we need to go forward. And you don't want to put yourself in a hole like that. And we had too many penalties, 13 penalties overall. And I think eight of them were in the first quarter. So we've got to do a better job with that. So we'll, um, we've got a bye week coming up. We're, we're going to heal up here and uh, get ourselves ready to go down for the, the stretch run here. Yeah, I mean, little things. I mean, every single game you, you leave plays out there where you think you can hit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, you said it. The turnovers just it uh, changed the game. Uh, I think I gave them 21 points pretty much uh, through turnovers, and and just kind of like I said at the New England game, you can't give good teams points uh, turning the ball over. So uh, that was pretty much the changing point of the game.
Yeah, I mean, I mean, it sucks right now. I mean, it's plain and simple. I mean, you, you wanted to win that game going into the bye week against a good team like that, a playoff team. And, uh, but at the same time, we still control our own destiny. Uh, if, we, if we can go out there and win football games uh, after the bye week, uh, it's kind of like that reset, get your body right, and come back with that mentality that we're going to win and you can still get home field advantage, hopefully. All right, time now to take a look at the social blitz presented by the general, as we usually do about this time here on Total Access End Game. And ooh, let's have a look at some of these tweets because Le'Veon fans, he does. That, that, that's about all he's he got. got time to right now. So, Lev taking to Twitter. He's getting ready for next season. This Monday night football game looking like a Big 12 football game. That's, yeah. that's right. Not, not a whole lot of defense played in the Big 12, but there was defense in this one. And the Rams know that. Joe Theismann back on Twitter. Congratulations to the Rams and Chiefs on breaking our record for total points in a Monday. Monday night game. Yes, 35 years was long enough. No, Absolutely. Yeah. Just, I'm not, not too happy about it. I don't know how to take that one, but Kurt yeah, Warner, no, 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 no. always appreciate the moments where you get to witness history. Well done, Rams, Chiefs. Thanks for putting a show on for all of us. We salute you. And Kurt Warner, oh, by the way, was the last quarterback to win the MVP as a first-year starter. That was 1999. Patrick Mahomes, despite the loss tonight, looking to throw his hat. In yeah, it was a crazy game. Crazy game. And, um, <laughs> It seemed like at the end, whoever had the ball last was going to win. That's what it felt like. And um, ultimately, our defense had two turnovers there at the end that proved to be the, the, the winning turnovers. And um, it was back and forth the whole game. It was, it was you know, with times where we felt like we had all the momentum. We thought we were going to put the knife in them and finish it. And, and then there was times where, you know, it was the other way around. We were like, all right, we need to kind of claw back into this. And um, it, was, it was a fun one. Yeah, I mean, you see the points and, and all that. And I know the Chiefs had a defense touchdown on us as well. And um, so... Our defense made the made the plays when they needed to, and they, it seems like they've been doing that for a while now. Every time we kind of really need it, they, they they get it done. And you know, I know they don't want to give up that many points, but um, you know, it's the bend don't break thing, and uh, ultimately they were able to make the plays to win the game. Jared Goff, he's been unbelievable, but so has Patrick Mahomes. You look at these guys on this night, completions and attempts, uh, they're right on pace, 478 to 413 yards. But in the end, Jared Goff coming away with the win. He now has 26 passing touchdowns on this season. Now, more to come. Rams get the win, 54 to 51. Is, it, is this a Super Bowl preview, Will? You have 10 seconds left. I think so. I think so, bro. If it is, we got us a treat. We're going to have a treat, yeah, for sure. No, because New Orleans is not in it.